Okay, let's retry here. Welcome to Lux Digital Church. My name is Mark, and I'm the pastor here at Lux. Thank you for coming. Guys, you had me so emotional after uh, after the video that the Dream Team put together that I totally uh, forgot to swap out the mics. I completely forgot about it. Glad to be here with you guys tonight. Thank you so much for being here, guys, and Dream Team, thank you so much. Jenny, thank you for being willing to come on. Guys, many of you may not know that... Uh, Janny's story, most of you probably don't, but you really don't understand the significance of Janny being here with us tonight and leading the time of prayer with us tonight here. Um, it's such a huge praise and such a big deal. And so thank you so much, Janny, for being here. Thank you to everybody who's made Lux Digital what it is over the course of this past year. Thank you to Greg and my wife and Haley and Ryan and Sam and Brittany and Sheebs and Zach and Shane who've been willing to come in and serve in person week after week after week, um, getting nothing in return for the most part, just being here with us. Sometimes we feed them and that's about it, but they give so many hours to it. I'm not going to talk long tonight. I'm going to be really brief, but I did have a question for you. When you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Drop those comments in chat because I actually do want to read them. When you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? And the reason that I'm asking that is because I think as we're at our first year, at our first birthday, it's reasonable to look and to ask, what do we want to be when we grow up? It's one thing to see us as what we are, and we've talked a lot about vision and direction. By the way, I see some things here. A spaceman, I see that. I wanted to be an Olympic ice skater or a teacher, my wife says. Tex Holden said, a womanizer. That's good. Um, an archaeologist, uh, the Spiggle said. A gunsmith. I actually wanted to be a pastor, Flat Cap says. Um, a teacher, uh, an NHL hockey pay player, an orthopedic surgeon, a doctor, a veterinarian, and an NFL player. Um, I wanted to be a pirate. Gray Hood. Gray Hood's response is, I would like to be a pirate, a professional drummer. Uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to be an interior designer. I wanted to be a marine biologist, um, a surgical oncologist, uh, a did someone, an ice cream man, Rabbitman wanted to be an ice cream man, an oceanographer, uh, Stormbrave wanted to be a teacher, you kind of are one, I wanted to be a DJ, a professional gamer, a tech teacher, TV, AV producer, video producer, a cowboy, a youth pastor, when I was a kid I wanted to be an Olympic swimmer, I wanted to be a vet, um, and still could, but I don't really want to do it anymore, Kristen H., I understand you probably have some decisions to make. My wife uh, wanted to be a nurse, Flat Cap said. I wanted to be Tim Allen, Gibbles and Bits says. A scientist from Dexter's lab, says JT Fam. Uh, to be fair, I said archaeologist, but I really wanted to be Indiana Jones. That totally makes sense. Uh, Flat Cap, by the way, glad to have you here with us tonight. Uh, I wanted to be a doctor, but then realized I don't like being near blood. Don't want to, don't want to do that, I understand. A veterinarian. I wanted to be strong in the Lord, getting back to that. Um, Ched Z, uh, we both should have been in the NHL, absolutely. Um, oh, geez, a law enforcement or, or a soldier, uh, an archaeologist. I loved Indiana Jones a lot as a kid. Sounds like Doc and Spiggle would have a, a great time hanging out. Well, guys, all of you guys had really logical things that you wanted to be. When I grew up as a little kid, I can remember my parents, my family, telling me a Power Ranger this is more akin to what I wanted to be. More than anything, I always wanted to be a husband and a dad. Beggy man, that's why you're going to make a great husband and a dad. Would someone single please date Beggy man? Would so please. He's amazing. He makes amazing videos. He looks like the guy, the new Spider-Man. He's super ripped. Come on. Um, dude, I'd love to lead worship uh, with Lux sometime if the opportunity ever comes up. Juju, the opportunity will come up. Uh, can someone with many sins make a good dad? That's a great question. Uh, Lan Lionheart, yes, someone with many sins can make a good father. I'm a man with many sins, and I hope that I'm a good dad. Um, so when I was a kid, my parents said I could be anything. And for the longest time, the only thing I can remember wanting to be when I grew up was a Black Panther. And when I say that, I don't mean like the radical group, uh, you know, during the civil rights movement. I mean a literal, like cat like a big cat i wanted to become a black panther i thought if i could be anything that i wanted to be when i grew up why would i not 
become the apex predator of my area of the jungle. To be honest, Animorphs were kind of a thing when I was a kid too, so I would have been fine, you know, transforming into a Black Panther and transforming out of being a Black Panther, but as a kid... I wanted to be a Black Panther. And then I remember later in life, we had to go through, in eighth grade, uh, we had to go through, what do you want to be when you grow up? Sort of like class. Um, full on jungle book mode, absolutely. I love Animorphs. A-Rod does love Animorphs. Uh, the Black Panther isn't the apex anywhere, you scrub. Come on, the Black Panther is definitely an apex predator somewhere. I'm almost guaranteed that there's somewhere that the apex, the apex predator is Black Panther. Um, Anyway, uh, whenever I was in eighth grade, we had to do this project about future careers, and I found out that the easiest way to do it was to look in one book and do research about the military, and through that, I did a bunch of projects on on the military, and I decided in that time that I wanted to be an Air Force pilot, and so I set out to be an Air Force pilot. I even took flight lessons, and I wanted to go into the Air Force. I wanted to fly jets. I thought that would be like a really cool job, and you needed really good eyesight, so you know, back in the day, I ate carrots. I don't eat them anymore because I'm not an Air Force pilot. Um, and so, so I really, you know, that's what I wanted to do. And then I remember in 10th grade, that changing. And in 10th grade, I was standing in one of the front rows of the church. Literally, the chat is moving so fast. I can't keep up with it. But I love you all. I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, I'm going to have to look up the Animorphs now. Yes, Darth Nacho Mama, definitely look up Animorphs. Um, and uh, I remember in 10th grade, I was standing in one of the front pews in New Swickley Presbyterian Church. And um, and uh, as I was standing in one of the front pews of New Swickley Pres, uh, I felt God tell me that you were to be a youth pastor. And God began moving me from pilot to pastor. And I, I remember that distinctly because that day totally altered my life. It became a, this is now what I want to be when I grow up. And I don't know what stage of life you're in. You might be young enough that you can still dream about what you want to be when you grow up. But for me, um, <laughs> you know, my entire life changed and altered whenever God moved into my life and reshaped and changed who I was and decided that I wasn't to be what I wanted to be or what I thought I was going to be but instead took my life in a new direction and changed who I was in accordance with his plan for my life. Because the reality is, I want you to know, if you're here tonight, God does have a plan for your life. And he loves you. And it's a great plan. God actually has intentions for you. He loves you, he cares for you, and he's written about those things. And when we tune in to him, we can actually begin to hear and discern God's plan for our life, which is almost always better for our plan. And so when we started Lux, the question became, what do we want to be when we grow up? Meaning not what is our plan or what is Mark's plan for Lux, but what did God intend for us? Well, for me, that came from two passages in the Bible. A couple of passages, actually. I have three. Let's look at the first one. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. From Jeremiah 29, 11. And then in the book of Matthew, in the book of Acts, there was two passages that really shaped and transformed when I said, what does Lux want to be when it grows up? Who should we be as a community as we grow older? We're one years old today, and that's amazing, and it's super exciting. But the question is, who are we at year two? And then who are we at year three? And who are we at year 10? Who are we at year 15? Who are we at year 30? Who has God called us as a community to be? What do we want to be when we grow up? And he shapes communities with two passages, I think, that come from his word. The first one is the book of Matthew 28. And it's the last command that Jesus gives to his followers. He says this, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And then 
right after this in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 1, when Jesus is with his disciples right before he ascends into heaven, this passage in Matthew 28, um, he gives, and then in, in, in Acts chapter 1, the, the apostle Luke says this, he says, he, Jesus said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father is set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And now for the Jews that were listening to Jesus, this was alarming. So you're going to be my messenger and you're going to take the message of Jesus to first Jerusalem, which made sense, and then Judea and Samaria. And Samaria was full of a group of people that the Jews considered to be half-breeds. They had fallen off from the people of Israel when Israel had come back to the promised land after their exile in Babylon. The, the Samaritans were not able to trace their heritage back to the original 12 tribes. They only viewed the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy as authoritative, whereas the Jews viewed all of the prophets and the historical literature and the poetry as being authoritative as well. They didn't even associate with them. It was considered wrong for you to even go into the places that they lived. So when they heard, you're also going to go to the Samaritans, it was wild. And when he says you're to go to the ends of the earth, that's to the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people, the people that weren't chosen by God. For the Jews, this was completely different than anything that had been told to them before. But I think the command that God put on his followers exists on us today as people who are carrying out the Great Commission to go and disciple people in the name of Jesus and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we as well are supposed to do that in our Jerusalem, our Judea, Samaria, and our ends of the earth. So as I prayed through what that looked like, I looked at our our multiplication strategy as a church, something that we had to start with from the very beginning. And I said, what does this look like? And I said, what's Jerusalem for us? For us, Jerusalem is right here, twitch.tv. Before COVID, 100 million unique viewers were here every single month. 3.5 million broadcasters. Those numbers have only increased. The average person watches 75 minutes a day. 73% of those people are male. The people who have lacked leadership inside the church are here. The people who have failed to be who Jesus ultimately called them to be, to lead their families and to lead the church, are here. And so for us at Lux, I just want to let you know what some of our plans are for the future and what we want to be when we grow up. We want to partner with streamers who are digital missionaries, reaching a mission field that has been long, forgotten about, neglected, unremembered. It has been ignored. We want to partner with people like Aki, who's here tonight, and like many others in the streaming community. We want to partner with them in prayer. We want to partner with them in resources. We want to support them and uplift them in every way we possibly can so that they can reach people in the best way. And like Jade, who's here with us tonight. Jade, I didn't know you were here. Otherwise, I would have said your name. And Jade, who's here with us tonight. It's to find digital missionaries and say, as a church family, we know there's missionaries that we could support all over the world, but we want to find streamers and content creators, YouTubers, and people on Twitch who are reaching the gaming community, and we want to partner with you to help you do everything that you can to be on mission. Let us disciple people. Will you please help us reach people? And we want to stand with you unified, not threatened or competing with you to help you bring people to Jesus. Let me just be real with you guys. A lot of the streamers that are out there that are content creators that are Christians are in desperate need of support, of accountability, of love, of encouragement, and of prayer by our community. If you have time throughout the day, would you go hang out in Justinian stream? Would you go hang out in, in Chino Major stream? Would you hang out in Aki stream? Would you hang out in Josh's stream? Would you hang out in Jate's stream? Would you go over to them right now and follow them and hang out in their streams and just encourage them and love on them? Our hope is in the future that our Jerusalem will have a, law, a large network of streamers and content creators that we're partnered with all over Twitch. So what does it mean to go to Judea, the surrounding area, or to Samaria for us? Well, for us, that means digital expressions of the church that are adjacent to what we're doing right now. That means exploring churches that can be completely on social media platforms like Facebook and YouTube. It means planting churches in places that are really pioneering and on the cutting edge of technology like Altspace and VR chat. 
It means starting campuses in places that people aren't starting campuses. It means always keeping our eye for where people who are far from Jesus are engaging digitally and may be able to not only hear, but also receive the good news of Jesus. If there's people building relationships in digital space, Lux Digital Church wants to be there building relationships with them. There are people engaging online all over the place, not just here on Twitch. And we believe we're a community that's equipped, prepared, and sent with the, with the blessing of God on us to reach people who are engaging in digital communities all across the internet. And finally, to the ends of the earth. Can I be really honest with you guys? This has me more excited than I'll ever, and I don't want to say anything else, but it has me very excited. When we prayed about what it would look like to really reach the ends of the earth, we realized there was a unique opportunity for the digital church to mesh and partner with the micro church movement that's starting out of Tampa Underground, Kansas City Underground, and many others across the United States and outside of the U.S. We realize there's this unique opportunity for God to send us leaders and people who love people and people with the gift of pastoring and shepherding to raise up churches inside their homes, inside their apartments, inside their workplaces, inside their breweries, inside of their coffee shops, where they can minister to and love on people physically. We fully believe that God is calling us to start a movement through the online gaming community. One that is not limited to the internet, but occupies physical space. I believe there are people who are in the stream right now with the gift of apostleship on their lives that will start a house church, that will raise up house church planters inside of them and will lead networks of house churches. I believe there will become a day when there are hundreds of gamers gathered in front of their computers all across the globe who are worshiping Jesus with us, but there will also be 10 people in our church in Moscow and 12 people in South Africa and 30 people in our churches in New York City and a dozen people in our church in California and a dozen people in our church in Pittsburgh and 50 people in the middle of Missouri and there'll be 100 people worshiping together in house churches in Florida and in Canada and in South America and on every single country continent and we'll be able to create a web of digital resources accountability and church family that allows you to be tapped in to the global church it allows us to really speak every language to be in every culture to be uniquely equipped as missionaries in our physical locations to reach anyone anywhere at any time I believe in the distant future, maybe not so distant future, but in the years to come, we will see a physical representation of Lux that will eclipse the digital representation of Lux. I believe that God has a desire to restart a revival in your heart and in your town, in your workplace, inside your family. And I believe that God is calling people out of this community to do exactly that. And we're partnering with organizations to train people as disciple makers and train people as missionaries. So in the future, when we're ready, we're going to open those doors so you can come in and be trained as a local missionary to reach your neighbors and reach your coworkers and reach your family members and bring them into your physical location to love on them, to mar do marriages for them, to offer communion to them, to baptize them, to be the church in physical space that's connected through a global digital network. I believe it is through this generation that we may be able to see truly a church of all languages, of all nations, of all cultures, of all peoples. And I believe that God is calling us to play a part in that. To truly be a church that doesn't just say that we're going to the ends of the earth, but puts churches to the ends of the earth. Now I say all of that and you got to like, how do I know what God's calling me to? How do I know what's in my future? We can look at this stuff at 10,000 feet and we could say, yeah, churches in virtual reality and on Facebook. And we could say churches in people's homes all across the globe. And we can see streamers that we're partnered with and a network of content creators that we're loving on and caring for and supporting and praying for. But what do I do? Well, the first thing that you do, need to do is connect with your father to build your faith. Because I can tell you this, the enemy will never want what is in our hearts to happen. The enemy will never want Lux Digital Church to reach its potential. 
And the only way he prevents us from reaching our potential is by stopping each of us individually from reaching ours. Satan doesn't want to come in and corrupt the vision or change the dream. All he needs to do is change our hearts and draw them away from Jesus and draw them towards the things of this world. So what can we do? One, read your Bible. Get in the word. I know it's not easy. Two, reconnect with God through prayer. Be a people who are known and marked by the way and the frequency with which we pray. See, seek wisdom from others. Find people to pour into your life. Let people invest in you. And D, get to work. There is work to be done, my friends. There is opportunity that abounds. And I refuse to allow myself, my emotions, my shortcomings, my inadequacies to get in the way of what God will do. Because God can do more through you than you could ever do on your own. And God can work through the places that you feel sinful and hurt and broken and destitute and unlovable. And he can bring redemption, truth, life, restoration, and new people into his kingdom. And I believe he can and will do it through us. Finally, I'm going to close with this. When we dream, we look forward, but we also must not sacrifice our present. Today, we have a great church that's full of great people. You saw tonight, we have an amazing team full of dedicated, faithful, and deeply loving servants. And there is plenty of work to do, and there's many ways that we can improve how we're reaching people today. And I'll leave you with this. Our dreams from tomorrow only become a reality through the faithfulness of today. So if you want to play a part in what we believe God is doing through Lux Digital Church, through us, not me, not Greg, not my wife, not through any one of us, through us, plural, be faithful to what is God has called you do, to do today. Pray, read, seek wisdom, get to work. Lux Digital Church, this is our first birthday, but I got to just... It's only the beginning. I love you so much. Let's pray. Father God, I love you and I thank you. I know it's late. It's 945. I thank you for all the crazy people who've stuck with us this entire time. I pray, God, that this would not be the end, but would be the beginning of something new and a fresh work of your spirit. I believe that you can bring revival through the power of your Holy Spirit. And I even ask right now, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, we need your power and we want to receive it tonight. Would you fall on those of us from our church family that need you tonight? Holy Spirit, would you come and fill us and prepare us? Would you fill us, Father, and lead us into year two? Because you have bigger plans for year two than what you did in year one. And when we celebrate the end of year two, we will look into year three and you will have plans bigger for year three than what you did in year one and year two. Thank you, Father, for the lives that you have changed, for the faith that you have revived, for the goodness that you have bestowed on us. Lead us, guide us, and give us faith to follow and courage not to stray, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen.